All right, and the last thing we're going to do, we just have uh, two more problems to finish up with, and we'll be done with 7.1. Um, when we have a function value, we want to evaluate this. This g says go to the g function, which is right here. And we're going to write it down, so I'm going to have um, cube root of x minus 8. And then it says everywhere x is at, we want to put a 7 in place of that. So I'm going to put a 7 right there and leave everything else the same. Now I want to do the math. 7 minus 8 is a negative 1. Well, the cubed root of negative 1 is just negative 1. Okay. And on number 21, if I want to find f at negative 1, you go to the f function, which is square root of 2x plus 3. And then everywhere x is at, I'm going to substitute negative 1 in place of x right there. So I'm going to put negative 1 there. I'm going to leave everything else the same and solve this. So that becomes negative 2 plus 3. The square root of 1. Well, the square root of 1 is just 1. Okay? So we go back and remember, let's see if we can flip back a page. Remember our calculator is here. We can only put the number values, the numeric values in the calculator. We cannot put variables in the calculators that you're allowed to use in the math lab. Um, you can, but you divide. For the variables, you divide by the index. Okay? And for the number values of our radicand, we can put those in to check, to use as a check. Uh, this parenthesis maybe is also a button on your calculator, so let me also go ahead and put that in. A, when you close your parenthesis, it's just going to be a parenthesis, though. I think you just find the close in parenthesis on it and hit enter. All right, so that should be it on radicands and radical functions. We'll continue in the next lesson and learn a little bit more about these.